Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the Nutrition 101 series. So this video might seem kind of off topic for a nutrition series, but I do think that it is so important to talk about and this whole series has been about nourishing your body properly and then also just, you know, all of the body systems that relate to nutrition and, you know, how they work so that we know how to properly nourish our bodies. Hormones are so incredibly important and crucial to proper functioning of the body. Their, you know, most basic definition is just chemical messengers. So they play major, major roles in the body to signal all the different things that need to happen and they are just super important. And like I said, there are tons of hormones that all have different roles within the body, within different body systems. But in today's video, I just wanted to kind of focus on and hone in on the hormones related to our reproductive system because they are, you know, very important to understand and it's just not something I feel like is talked about a whole lot. Of course, when we are younger and we start to go through puberty and, you know, start getting our period as, you know, girls and women, we do get some information about this, but I feel like we don't really learn, at least I didn't, maybe you guys did, but I certainly did not learn, like, about my whole cycle and how it really works and just kind of all the ins and outs of what exactly is going on, you know, every cycle. And this is something that I have personally just been looking a lot into um, as far as hormones specifically and balancing them. And it's just very, very interesting. And um, a, a while ago, I went off of birth control. I just did not want to be on the pill anymore. Um, it was just a decision that I made. And I started using the fertility awareness method. So I was really, you know, learning, actually learning my cycle and seeing, you know, paying attention to what happens, you know, every month and what I, my body goes through. So it's just been a very um, kind of empowering and interesting experience to go through. And I just want to kind of start maybe this conversation here on my channel or at least just talk about it in this video just you know what the cycle our cycles actually entail and you know what our hormones do that are involved and their roles and it's all just really interesting stuff so we're going to talk about it so as women we obviously have you know a reproductive or uh, menstrual cycle typically every month or so the average is 28 days, but that is just an average. Most women do not fall, you know, exactly 28 days. Most fall right around that number. Um, but again, that is just an average. And during that 28 or so day cycle, basically what happens is we have different hormones that rise and fall during that time, which triggers different things to happen and basically just kind of rules how our cycle goes. And then depending on which hormones are falling or surging at any given time, it could affect our mood, our energy, um, our love life, sleep, and then even like things that we crave, it really does make a big difference in how we feel. There are a few different hormones that get triggered at different times, but the main ones throughout our cycle are estrogen and progesterone, and then also testosterone too. Okay, so our cycle starts out with our period. The day that we get our period is day one of our new cycle, and our period is basically triggered by when our progesterone just drops pretty low, back to baseline essentially. That kind of triggers our period to start. And basically what our period is, it is just the lining of our uterus that had built up over the past month. It is just that shedding out because our body builds up that uterine lining so that it can um, you know, hold a baby, start of a, of, of a fetus. So once, you know, we're obviously not pregnant, it's time for our period to come around and that excess lining that was built up over the past month to create that cushy layer for a, you know, a baby to start growing, it just sheds out so we get back to our baseline. And when our period begins, like I said, we do have low progesterone, um, but also our estrogen is at a very low point uh, at the start of our period as well. And as our period goes on, you know, day by day, that estrogen slowly starts to climb. And the higher our estrogen is, generally the better we feel. We may feel um, just more energetic. Um, we may have higher libido. We also might just feel more optimistic overall. And then once our period has finished, we move into what is called the follicular phase. And if this is like a 28 day cycle, this would essentially start with like the second week of your cycle. And what kicks off this follicular phase is actually a hormone. It is released from our pituitary gland and it is called the follicle stimulating hormone. And basically what it does is it signals our follicles, which are within our ovaries, to start maturing. And um, our follicles are actually what are hosting or holding on to our eggs. So as this you know, week continues on, as we are still in the follicular phase, our estrogen as well as testosterone will continue or start to increase and they will just keep on rising and rising and the 
higher both of these hormones are, again, the better that we feel. Our energy is likely going to improve. We're probably going to feel more self-sufficient um, and confident and maybe even like more willing to take risks or be an extrovert. And then as that second week or that follicular phase is coming to an end, we will start to release what is called luteinizing hormone. And when we get this surge of luteinizing hormone, it actually signals um, you know, our ovaries that it is almost time to ovulate. So when you detect this hormone in your system, you know that you're likely going to ovulate anywhere from like, I think 12 to 24, maybe even 48 hours. And 12 or so hours later, that ovulation actually occurs. And ovulation is when the egg gets released from that mature follicle and it goes out of your over ovary and then tra starts traveling down your fallopian tubes. So at that point, the follicle that released the egg is now empty. It becomes what is called the corpus luteum and then we'll just kind of go on to degrade itself. And at this point when we are ovulating, this is when our estrogen hormone as well as testosterone has hit its peak. And this is typically where our libido is the highest and we're probably gonna be feeling pretty good around this time of the month. So then the next phase of our cycle comes after ovulation. So if you do conceive during that ovulation time and you know create a baby essentially, you will then go on you know and start a pregnancy. But in the case that that does not happen and you just continue on you know your normal monthly cycle, you will move into what is called the luteal phase. So during the luteal phase, our estrogen as well as testosterone is going to start to decline, and another hormone called progesterone is going to start to increase. So progesterone is considered kind of like a sedative um, hormone. It really makes us ch want to chill out and wind down and you know depending on the person this really varies a lot person to person and especially how sensitive you are to hormone shifts and fluctuations but some people might start to feel sad during this time they just feel a little down and there is actually technically two estrogen dips like within the luteal phase so after you ovulate your estrogen as well as um, testosterone starts to go down, but uh, nearing like the end of that third week or so of your cycle on a 28 day cycle, you actually get a little bit of a rise again in estrogen, which can make you again feel that boost of energy, confidence, um, just makes you feel a little bit better. But then after a few days, it does start to again decline and will just continue to, to decline until your next cycle starts. So then moving into that fourth and final week of your cycle or so, <laughs> this is when your um, progesterone is still going to be pretty high and again you're going to feel like maybe you just want to stay close to home or you might be a little bit moody you may have some of those pms symptoms creep in you know moodiness and um even like physical symptoms and then also maybe just like bloating and headaches stuff like that and definitely during this time you're typically um going to just want more rest and crave more rest and this is definitely a good time of the month to just really go easy on yourself and have a lot of grace because physically this is just kind of when our bodies are asking to just slow down a little bit so it's a good time to just kind of listen to them and grant them that if you can. And then as you're nearing the end of that fourth week or so, progesterone is going to start to decline and as it gets pretty low, that is then when your next cycle will begin and your period will start and then it starts all over again. <laughs> so that is just kind of an overview of our menstrual cycle and all of like the key hormones that come into play. It really is very intricate and interesting and also you know a lot can go wrong. Um, hormones can be unbalanced which can cause all kinds of crazy symptoms and this is something that I personally um, have always dealt with and I'm like really dealing with now. I've recently kind of come to um, really accept the idea, I mean I feel like I always kind of knew this but like just never really dealt with it and that is that periods aren't supposed to be and PMS you know isn't supposed to be super miserable. It's not supposed to be something that like we can barely handle. Um, of course it's uncomfortable and yeah we might be a little moody and crave a little more but um, like you know certain foods but it's not supposed to be this like big awful 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 time every month which it always has been for me personally and you know for years I was just on birth control because that would you know it basically just got rid of my body's own cycle and just replaced that with artificial hormones and, and therefore just kind of got rid of the symptoms and masked them but of course when I went off the pill they came back because you know something is not quite right um, as far as my hormones and um, whether or not they're balanced and I've actually been um, 
just doing a lot of research recently and I went and even saw like a naturopath and basically I'm estrogen dominant which is unfortunately um, very common today in our society so if you I mean it like I am not an expert when it comes to this kind of stuff I am not a doctor I am not a natural doctor or anything like that um, but I thought that this would be just kind of interesting to share because I certainly didn't know about really any of this stuff over the la like last year plus I've really just been going on kind of this journey with my body and getting to know it and what's supposed to happen and just with everything like all the symptoms the cervical mucus all of that which has been really interesting but also it's like I feel like it's so important to get to know your body and we're not typically taught you know this much in detail or a lot of us are just kind of put on birth control when we're pretty young and we never really get that chance to um, get to know our bodies. So I just thought that this would be like an interesting conversation to have, especially because this is something that's prevalent in my life right now. I'm just really trying to balance out my hormones, specifically because I have really, really brutal, brutal periods where I mean like I am like out for the count, throwing up, like ridiculous pain, which is like, it's not normal. It is not normal. And I always kind of knew it wasn't normal, and I, you know, I asked my OB, and she was just kind of like, well, you know, there's not really much I can do, but we can put you on the pill, and that will get rid of your symptoms. Which, you know, that's fine, but it doesn't solve the problem. And now I'm kind of at a point in my life where I'm ready to figure out what the problem is. Um, definitely some kind of hormone ba uh, imbalance happening, and I'm trying now to take steps to fix that. Uh, working with this naturopath. Um, so if you guys want to hear more about that, let me know. Um, I can obviously can't like recommend anything because that's not my area. It's not within my scope of practice, um, and I wouldn't want to, to you know steer anyone in the wrong direction. But I can certainly maybe share my story and just kind of share what I'm doing and see how things are going and if it's helping. Um, but yeah, I think that this is just like a conversation I wanted to have and, and bring light to because I know I'm not the only one that this happens to. It is very common just with our lives nowadays, um, just with our diets, um, you know, use of plastic on so many things and also just like stress levels. Stress levels can completely throw our hormones out of whack. In fact, um, like the precursor to create cortisol, which is a stress hormone, is the same precursor to create progesterone. And a lot of times women will end up being, you know, we get stressed out because we live in a go-go-go society and we have so many pressures on us all the time. And um, we end up creating a lot of cortisol and there's nothing left over to make enough progesterone. So we end up having way higher estrogen than we do proge progesterone. And we end up having all these crazy symptoms and things just aren't working the way that they're supposed to. So that is all I have for this video today. I know that this was kind of a rant here at the end, but I hope that you guys found this video helpful and maybe you learned something from it. Uh, but yeah, so thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you are enjoying my videos. And I will see you guys in the next one. See you Bye. Face.